Um, I think one of the more interesting things is our focus now on individual differences. You know, if you condition uh, 10 rats or 20 rats to be afraid of a sound paired with a shock, um, you find that some are very afraid and some are not very afraid and the others are kind of in the middle. And so the typical way of dealing with that is you average it all together and you get the mean and that's what you study. Um, the outliers are viewed as kind of a nuisance that adds variance to the data. But now we've begun to study those previous uh, nuisances and try to um, uh, understand a little more uh, about you know, what's really going on in terms of pathological fear because almost all of the, uh, the drugs that are developed to treat um, fear and anxiety are developed on that average animal rather than the extremes. But what we really need to understand, I think, and the drugs would be much more effective and perhaps have fewer side effects if they were targeted for the animals with extreme fear. So we're trying to um, come at the question of what causes animals to have this extreme fear? What, what pushes them out to the ends of the distribution? Um, the, the basic idea is that you know, one way to do this would be to take animals that, that have the extreme fear and then start breeding them and create uh, genetic lines that are, that are fearful. But um, I think it's also interesting to ask, given that it already exists in the population of rats, these extreme behaviors, what can we learn about, um, uh, say, the pathophysiology of extreme fear by studying those animals? In other words, we don't have to start breeding and creating genetic lines to get at um, what's different because the difference is already there. We can compare animals that are really afraid and those that are not afraid and look in their brains uh, and see if there are any, for example, structural differences in the amygdala in terms of how the neurons, uh, um, what their dendritic branches are, what their axons are like, what kinds of molecules are present in those neurons and to what extent. So we can get a lot of information that might distinguish fearful and not so fearful rats uh, that could provide important clues as to what pushes them out there uh, towards the extremes. Yeah. But that project's just beginning, so we don't have any answers, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be an important project. Mm -hmm.